All right, well, it's uh, 1045. I guess we can get started here. Um, so my name is Jim McInnes. Uh, I'm from Appnovation Technologies in Vancouver, Canada. And uh, my presentation today is Alfresco, Drupal's document uh, management solution. Just before I get started, uh, who here is familiar with Alfresco? So quite a few people here from Alfresco. It's great. So uh, actually, I seem to have uh, two uh, title pages here. So. <laughs> I'll just move on to that. So just a little bit about AppNovation. Um, so AppNovation, um, so as I said, we're out of uh, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, we have offices in uh, Atlanta and London. Um, we essentially are a software company for hire, um, doing pretty much a lot of the things that you see here uh, on the slide here. Uh, in particular, um, we focus our, uh, most of our development on these three technologies here, uh, Drupal and Alfresco, which I'll be talking uh, about today and uh, something that's called Spark Core. Um, Spark Core, just so you know, it's, it's an HTML5 JavaScript MVC framework, um, which is pretty mature, actually came out of Apple. And uh, essentially these are kind of what we specialize in. It's moving right along. So just to give a little bit of background on Alfresco here. Um, so Alfresco, um, it's now considered to be the largest private pure play open source software company in the world. So one part of the slide just kind of got cut off here. Um, so it's, if people are familiar with Alfresco, it's essentially document repository system. Um, they uh, are actually out of Atlanta as well. And, uh, and, they, um, and uh, they're kind of like, uh, I guess if you could uh, think about SharePoint, if you're familiar with Microsoft SharePoint, it's kind of a replacement for that. Uh, it's also kind of a replacement for what people used to do, or I guess still do, um, with just a file server. You know, just putting, you know, if you have a file server with, you know, all your documents on a file server, which people used to do a lot and still do, it's kind of like, kind of like that concept on steroids. Ah, so here we go. So yeah, three minute downloads. So I won't go through all the marketing here on, on the Alfresco slide. So some of the key features of Alfresco. So as I said, it provides a, a content management document repository. Provides free text indexing and queries on that repository using Solar. So you drop a document in, into the repository, it'll do a free t uh, in index it and uh, using Solar, and uh, you can search it using Solar, uh, using basically keywords, keyword searching on those documents. And then it also provides, this is a very uh, nice piece of Alfresco, is that it provides a number of ways that you can actually access this data. So for sure you can log into a, web, a website and, and upload it that way through the web, but you can also uh, interact with this uh, document repository using either FTP, IMAP, SIFS, uh, SIFS has an SMB kind of mounting them as a drive, CMIS, which I'll get into quite a bit more uh, later and there's a the few other ways of actually uh, getting at this data, these document repositories. It has a very strong workflow mechanism, um, so uh, for essentially managing documents um, and actually the workflow of a document, approvals, those kind of things, how documents get approved. And uh, it also provides very, very good, strong versioning uh, of your documents as well. So straight out of the box, it uh, provides a lot of these great features. Unlike Drupal, which doesn't really do a lot for you out of the box, uh, out of the box, Alfresco does quite a bit for you out of the box. So just gonna step back and just give a brief, quick overview of Alfresco here from the video. It's a video that I have, whoops. That was that not appearing on the screen. I think I have to move it over. Okay. No, I can't see it. Okay, so here I'm just logging into a Fresco uh, share. So you see, once you log in, uh, you're presented with your dashboard. Uh, kind of tells you kind of where you are in the world right now. Um, now the most interesting thing here is really the repository. So I'm going to go up there and click on that repository button up there. And as you see, we presented with a directory structure, um, much like what you'd expect from a directory structure. Um, so we're just going to dig into a, a user area here, into a gym folder. And you can see that these are just documents that have been stored on the Afresco system. So beginning gu beginner's guide to Drupal. So I didn't show an example here, but this is just uploaded straight into the system via the UI previously. So it gives you a preview of the document. 
you can preview a document, any kind of document really, this is a PDF, doesn't matter if it's a, a Word document or anything like that. Download, download it right there. And then you can also view it in the browser if you want. Excuse me, can you see in front? I'm sorry, what's can that? You see in front? Yeah, of course. So what I'm also going to get into here is just show a little quickly a, a, a workflow. So you log it, so you click on the workflow, and you've got a, a number of choices of the different types of workflows that you can do here. Uh, I'm just going to do the second one here, uh, which is the uh, the group one. And then once that's selected, it puts you into the screen that uh, allows you to uh, essentially set up your workflow and and add the groups that you want uh, to actually approve this. And if we come down, I'll have to uh, select uh, an assignee here, a group, a group of approvers. And all right, it's coming soon. Okay, and we move it over. All right, and now I w would have received an email for that telling me that there's a new document that's been uploaded to a Fresco and a new workflow has been created on it and uh, that I need to uh, go and uh, do my approvals on that document. So now I'll go back to my, my dashboard and you see down here on my tasks I now have um, my new tasks that I need to uh, review this document that's just being uh, uploaded. So I go in there and I can take a look at it. And you can see here that uh, here's the metadata that's associated with this. And if you come down further, as I come down, you can see well, at the moment there's only one version. But if I were to upload another version or make edits, I would get a list of versions here that I could uh, go back to if I need to. And I believe that's almost the end of our video on the fresco. In fact, I believe it is. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to where I was. Mm. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So just a little bit more on kind of what a fresco, what it's built on. So uh, a fresco is, um, uh, as I said, it's an open source system um, that's built on Java using Spring. So Spring, if you're, familiar, if you're not familiar with that, Spring is a, it's an MVC ja uh, Java framework. Uh, and then Hibernate is kind of a, an ORM for Java. Uh, it's kind of like that. And then it's, it's really, I mean, Alfresco is really kind of taking together almost the best of kind of what's out there in, in open source Java and really putting it together. Uh, Solar, another fabulous uh, open source Java project there. Uh, JPPM, uh, JPPM is, came out of JBoss. It's, um, that's what takes care of the workflows. It's uh, business project management as, is uh, what that stands for. Open Office, believe it or not, uh, is actually back there uh, running away. Uh, open Office is, is used uh, when you, uh, when earlier when we saw the preview of, of the image. Uh, that's what Open Office is being used for, and it's, um, it can convert uh, anything basically to a PDF. This is essentially what it does, and uh, and so you can view it as a PDF. And then there's also many other open source uh, systems that have been integrated into it that give you it's the IMAP and the and the CIFs and the FTP and a whole bunch of other nice things. So here's a kind of a product architecture slide from Alfresco. So this kind of shows you kind of the whole kind of all the layers uh, that exist here. Uh, at the bottom, you can see that we have LDAP, um, so it does support LDAP uh, out of the box. 
uh, obviously uses the file system database. Typically it uses um, um, MySQL, but you can use whichever database you wish. The file system though, I mean as far as the database itself though, it, none of the documents are stored in the database. Database is really just for metadata and, and kind of associated data. Uh, the file system is, is really what they, they uh, uh, use for actually the, the real repository where the documents are actually stored. Um, and then we have the, other, the, the layer in between and really the, the most interesting thing I'm going to talk about here is CMS as it relates to Drupal. And um, I won't get stay too much on this slide. I'll just move forward. Okay, so now, bringing this all together. So that's Alfresco, right? A very quick introduction to Alfresco. Now, how do we, how do we bring what we just saw there, that document repository, every kind of workflow, um, very, very solid document repository, very solid workflow, how do we integrate that in, in with Drupal? Now Drupal, um, I mean, no matter what, what great things it is good at, and it's many great things that it's good at, it's not particularly good with um, document repositories very large document repositories in particular, not that great with hierarchical data, like uh, file structure type data, um, not that solid on workflows uh, in compared to um, um, Alfresco. Um, however, uh, where well, Alfresco seriously breaks down and where Drupal really shines is just, just in the ability to really kind of build the kind of user race, the kind of website that you really want. So the thing about Afresco is, is that it's got this great back-end repository, it's got that user interface that I showed you, but it's not very flexible in the user interface. It's really not something that you would really want to use um, as you know, a front-end, you know, public-facing kind of website. Um, it's more of an intranet type of tool. Um, it's, it's, um, it's not really designed for um, much in the way of, of, of UI kind of customization. Uh, however, Drupal, obviously everybody knows that, you know, pretty much anything you can dream up, you can probably pretty much do with Drupal on, on that end. Now, bringing it all together, I'm going to talk about two, two ways that we can actually bring all of these great features of Alfresco uh, into Drupal and vice versa, bring all of those great features of Drupal uh, in with uh, Alfresco. And <laughs> the two ways that uh, I'm going to discuss about how that's done is one called CMIS, which is a, a public standard. And the other one is called Canopy, which is something that uh, us at Alf we at Alfesco uh, have developed and are currently working on and, and expect to uh, open source in the very near, fu near future. Okay, so CMIS. So CMIS, what it stands for is the Content Management Interoperability Service. And um, essentially it provides a standard mechanism um, uh, for connecting uh, document uh, management repositories or basically content management systems and specifically focused on repositories. And this is a standard um, that's being worked on by a number of organizations out there. Um, obviously Alfresco are big players on it, as well as uh, I believe SharePoint uh, supports it as well. Um, LifeRay, I believe, might even support it. Um, but there's a number of, number of uh, institutions and organizations out there that are, are really pushing uh, on this standard. So it, uh, how it works, it's essentially, it's, uh, it's a service. It's like a, a web service using SOAP or Atom, uh, RESTful services. It provides full CRUD and search capabilities. And is available out of the box in Alfresco. And is available in Drupal client side uh, using the CMIS module. So there's a, there's a standard module out there uh, for doing CMIS. And, um, as I said, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it simply provides the, uh, the client-side interface to it. It does not provide the server interface. Okay, so very simple diagram here, but really kind of mostly to kind of illustrate a later diagram. Um, so the thing about how, how this all works is that um, with CMIS and integrated with Alfresco, on the Alfresco side, everything more or less lives on the Alfresco side. As far as all the documents, everything just lives there. And when you, when you interact with it using CMIS, you're really just using Drupal as more or less as a pass-through, right? So documents just remain in Alfresco. If you have a PDF file, it just stays there and you have a link more or less on the Drupal side to it. And if you want to download it, it just more or less grabs it from Alfresco, pulls it through Drupal and just sends it back to your browser. So it's really just a pass-through is what's going on right there. 
Now, some of the some of the services that Seamus provides are well, folder navigation, uh, folder document create and delete, uh, upload and download of documents, search, so versioning, checkout, check in, and metadata. So now, obviously, um, my particular discussion here is about Alfresco, but in general, this is what CMS provides. So if you want to support CMS, you have to more or less provide these, these services. Okay, so the Drupal CMS module, uh, it's available from this site. It's obviously, you can probably find it easy through Google. Uh, it's available for Drupal 6 and 7, although Drupal 7 is still uh, a development release. And uh, actually, in general, uh, I would say that the kind of the whole thing is pretty much um, a development release. I mean, it's, r it's really more of a proof of concept at this point, the CMS module. And um, it's not really a fully realized product at this point. And um, I'll show you a quick demo of that uh, shortly here. And I'll explain for some of the reasons why that is. So I've got multiple methods of doing this today. Okay, so these screens, hold on. Oops, how did I get the debugger up there? Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So as you can see here, this is Drupal 6 at this point, and this one has the actual CMS module installed. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at something, uh, kind of the nicest feature of it is this browser. So as you see that this is the same directory structure that we had when we were in Alfresco. And uh, we're going to go through the documents there. That's my gym folder. And then you see there, there's our beginner's guide to Drupal, that document that we saw. So this is just coming straight out of that of Fresco and uh, displaying it for us. And there's uh, the list of kind of metadata associated with it. And if I come back. So. Yeah, so I didn't click on it, but if I were to click on it, it would, it would just download the same way it did uh, when I was in Fresco. Um, so now I'm going to show you uh, kind of the CC, CCK module that it provides. So we can create uh, document uh, content types that actually have a supported um, document type of, or a field type of an Fresco document. And this is all part of the, um, all part of the, uh, the CMS module. And as you can see here, that this field here is, is, a, is a CMS attachment. And so what it's going to do is that it's going to store in a node, uh, in a custom node, which is what we've got right here, um, a description as well as a, a link. This is not really what the, what the internal link looks like that it's storing, <coughs> but it, it is going to uh, maintain a, a link to that document within the node. So it's essentially a way of actually having a, a node that's associated with a document, and that document is actually stored in Alfresco. It's not actually stored in Drupal. And then I, yeah, so that's the end of that. Okay. Okay. So as I was talking about earlier, the, uh, the, the CMS modules, as I say, is, is really more of a proof of concept. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's missing quite a few things. So one of the major things that it's missing is it's got no dynamic authentication. So the way it is right now, it's pretty much hard-coded in terms of uh, if you, it, it, what, the, what the user is. So within the module itself, you have to actually specify a username and password that it's going to use. So admin, admin, say, right? Which is fine and all. But that's not really the way you want to work. The way you really want it to work is if you log into a fresco uh, to Drupal as Jim, you want it to log into a fresco as Jim, all right? So that's a major piece that's missing there. Another major thing is that that so you saw the CCK field, it's 
it's interesting, but um, what I didn't show you there is, is really how, how clumsy it is uh, on the authoring side. Um, it doesn't actually provide you with a very good interface to try to find out what find those documents and actually uh, locate them and actually create that link. Uh, you kind of have to cut and actually know the actual URL and, and paste it in, which is not very nice. Um, so that's something that's missing there, and, and it's kind of an oversight, but it's really just a proof of concept, I, I believe, the whole module is at this point. Currently only supports HTTP basic authentication. In fact, this is, this is true of both Drupal and Alfresco. So uh, when, you're on, when you're doing the REST service, um, uh, uh, or you're doing the authentication, rather, when over, the, over the service, it, it, it only does basic authentication, can't do OAuth, can't do anything more sophisticated than that, unless you, you want to write custom code to allow it to do that. And uh, just kind of on, on the good side is that uh, we are actively working on trying to uh, resolve a lot of these shortcomings of this module and uh, expect to uh, contribute that back uh, to the community um, uh, in hopefully a short, short amount of time here. Okay, so on to Canopy. So that was CMIS. So just to kind of recap on CMIS. So CMIS, um, as I say, everything's stored in Alfresco, stays in Alfresco. It's kind of a pass-through mechanism coming through, through Drupal. You know, you have to create custom node types, content types to, to interact with it in, in, you know, in kind of an interesting way. Now, what we've done at AppNovation is that we've created this, this new, new, new uh, way of integrating these two platforms that we're calling Canopy. And the way it works, um, it, this, the content is actually gets replicated uh, to, uh, between the two systems. So, for example, uh, if you're on the Fresco side, uh, you can actually create a document, sync it to, push a sync button that we've added to a Fresco, and it will actually sync it to uh, Drupal, but sync it to Drupal into an actual content type, like, like an existing content type, like an article, say, or, or a blog post, or something like that, something that's meaningful uh, to Drupal, a lot more meaningful than, than what CMS is providing. And then it also provides, it also allows you to do, uh, manage the workflow for documents on the Afresco side and, and publish them to the front side. Now here's, here's the, the kind of the, the reverse diagram of what I had earlier. Now what you're seeing here is, is that on the Afresco side, we have, we've created a custom UI. This is kind of the modifications that we've done. We've created a custom plugin for the UI that allows you to actually sync uh, documents to from Alfresco to Drupal, and it not only allows you to sync to Drupal, it allows you to sync to multiple Drupal sites. So you can actually choose, you know, site A, site B, site C, whatever, depending on, on where it is that you actually want this document to get posted to. Um, and it actually comes from like just normal, you know, Alfresco content types. And, and then same thing on the receive side here, we've had, we created what's called, um, and so on Fresco, the way that you can actually kind of expand uh, the system is using what's called web scripts. Now web scripts, what, there's a lot of ways you can expand the system. You can use Java. If you're familiar with Spring and Hibernate, you can, you can go that route. But that can be you know, somewhat gnarly at times. Um, but they have this other system called web scripts. And web scripts is JavaScript, uh, provides JavaScript to actually doing, creating your own REST APIs and things like that. Uh, you can do that in, in JavaScript. You can also use web scripts to actually expand the user interface as well. And then on the Drupal side, uh, we have essentially two custom modules, a bit more or less a send and receive. So the receive, which is probably probably the most interesting kind of component of all of this, because it's the one that takes information from a fresco and actually puts it into recognizable content types in Drupal, uh, like I was talking about with blog posts or articles or things like that. And then the custom send uh, kind of obviously makes sense. It's the reverse of that. Takes takes common normal. Drupal content types and actually syncs them into uh, um, Alfresco recognizable content types. Okay, so Canopy technology. Well, I guess I, I kind of talked about that there, but yeah, so on the Drupal side, it's custom module, provides JSON REST interface. So this is completely on JSON, JSON REST, uh, no Atom, no XML, none of that stuff. Uh, and on the Alfresco side, uh, same thing, custom JSON on that side uh, for the UI sync and then web scripts using the JavaScript. Okay, so now I'm gonna do another quick video of that. Why 
is that not opening up? Okay. So here we go. So, so essentially, so sorry, that went up kind of quick. So that was essentially kind of creating, we're creating a, a, an article here on the Drupal side. So we're, we're doing the title, pulling in an author, and as you can see, it's just a standard uh, Drupal 6 in this case, uh, create article. And we'll grab the content here. And uh, create a file name for it. And we're going to upload an image to it. And then we're going to ask to not be published because we want to actually start a workflow on it after we've saved it. Okay, so we've saved it here on the Drupal side. And it looks as you'd expect it to look. And then we're going to flip over to the Alfresco side. Okay, so we'll log into uh, Alfresco here. And for our canopy piece, we've created it so that you actually do get a preview of your website, your Drupal website, right in Alfresco. And you can see that right there. Now, the most important thing is we want to go to the repository. So now the way this works uh, on the Alfresco side is how we've done it is that depending on where, f where you are in a folder structure, that kind of defines what content types it's going gonna, it's gonna to interact with. So in this direction, essentially what happened is that it created a folder that was the date um, of when that was published. And so there it is there. That's just the text, the plain text of it. And the images are there. Actually, I don't sure if we actually show the images, but what we are going to do is we're going to start a workflow on that. So now that hasn't been published on the Drupal side. But what we've done is we've, we've, we've uploaded it, created on the Drupal side, it's been unpublished, and now it's gone into Canopy here, or into a fresco here, and now we're going to start a workflow on it, on that side. So we're going to ask one person to uh, kind of review that document there. Sorry for me turning my head here, I'm just not getting it on my screen here. So we've started a workflow there. And then actually that's the end of that part of it. But now I'll go into the next component. All right. All right, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the reverse, all right? So after the workflow, we're actually going to create a document here on, on, the, on the Afresco side. So we just uploaded um, some HTML, an image, into Alfresco here. And then we can review it. And then we're going to add some metadata to it as well. So that's one of the things that also gets uh, replicated uh, between the two systems is the metadata as well. Now this one, we are going to publish it. Yeah, so now you see up here where, that, where the mouse is, so it's, there's a button there called Publish to Live. Now that's essentially the, the, the UI customization that we've made is adding that. So now if we come back here, we do a refresh, you'll see that that'll be the War Makes 10 Years is now the top article there, and that just got synced from, from all of Fresco. So you can see that there's a, there's a lot of different kind of, of uses that you can make of this. I mean, certainly workflow, I mean, managing workflow is a big thing. I mean, certainly another thing about that as well is, as we all know, I mean, Drupal, uh, all the great things that, you know, you can do with Drupal, it's um, the back end, the back end admin is certainly something that's, you know, you know, there's some lacking there on the back end admin. So obviously this, this allows you to use Alfresco, I'm actually going to stop that. 
um, to actually do the backend admin for you. I should have known. that allows you to do the backend admin using Alfresco, and you can obviously manage your workflows, manage all your content, manage you know, whoever needs to you know, deal with or review all these documents, all of, the, all of these things, and, and then once it's all ready, you push it out to a website. And as I said, you can push it out to numerous websites at the same time, or you can say, I want, to, I want this piece of content going to site A, I want this other piece of content going to B, C, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I want to stop that video. Okay. All right. So just a uh, slide on the, on the future of Canopy. So at the moment, um, we expect to open source Canopy uh, by the end of the year. Now, uh, there's a few things that uh, we would like to do before we do that. Uh, one is uh, right at the moment, we don't support, fully support uh, Drupal 7. So that's a big thing that we want to try and do. Um, Error handling isn't that great at the moment. Uh, that's something that we absolutely need to uh, shore up quite a bit on that front. The configuration. So as I was talking about, you know, the way that you map uh, content types between the two systems is pretty clunky at this time. Um, it's, uh, you have to kind of uh, do some pretty gnarly XML and maybe even some code. Um, well, not maybe. You actually do have to do some, some code changes uh, for that. We'd rather have a user interface for that. And that is something that we, we will be working on, is, is building a, a, a user interface. Uh, just like Seamus, actually we have the same problem with Seamus in, in the terms of uh, the user account integration. Um, again, we are kind of like, you know, admin, admin kind of stuff going on. But we obviously don't want that going on. We, we want uh, to be the case that if you log in as, um, you know, Jim on one side, that you're Jim on the other side, right? Um, we definitely want to do that. And then uh, a major piece that we want to try and do is, is, is integrate the workflow. Uh, so uh, integrate the workflow of Alfresco into Drupal so that you can provide almost like the way, almost similar to the way the CMS works, uh, with the way it integrates the repository. We want to try and integrate that <laughs> workflow into Drupal. Um, a lot of the clients that we talk to who are interested in this, I mean, that's a really a big thing for them. Um, I mean, uh, one of the problems with Alfresco, as I said earlier, that it's, it's not that easy to, to customize. But not only that, I mean, a lot of people don't really like using the interface. <laughs> they, they prefer, they prefer what, what can be done in Drupal in terms of the interface, the flexibility that they get. So not just are they, they do not like the, uh, um, how it works, um, how it looks. Um, they, they just don't like using it very often. Okay, so uh, one, the other nice thing about Alfresco, about kind of using Alfresco, is that out of the box, it does give you obviously the repository, but also gives you Solar. So Solar is kind of built into it. And um, I think there was a presentation here earlier on Solar. Um, if people are familiar with what Solar is, I'll just give a, a brief description of that. So Solar is um, essentially, you know, your own personal Google is really what it is. Uh, more or less. It's essentially a, a, a free text Lucene indexer uh, that allows that essentially you just put in a document and it'll index that document for you, keyword index it, and then provide you with keyword searching on those documents. Um, and you, you can't actually uh, kind of build your own Google with it uh, if, if, you, if you're so inclined. Um, but it's, it's a really great tool, really great tool to re really just expand uh, the searching abilities of Drupal itself. Now, Yeah, that's what I just mentioned. Yeah, so this essentially, so the one way that you can actually make use of Solar in, from Drupal uh, is actually through that CMS module. So the CMS module uh, has a search mechanism, and that search mechanism on the Fresco side is done through Solar, is what's going on. So you can actually access it all completely 100% through, through CMS. Or you can actually just access the Solar database. Um, it's or the so, uh, yeah the Solar database straight from a fresco sorry Drupal using the Drupal um, Solar module. Um, so as, as if it was just a standalone so, uh, Solar. The nice thing about that is that can give you like a nice federated kind of search. Um, so whereby you actually can search the Solar database. So you can actually index stuff that's just exclusively lives on your Drupal site into the Solar. You also get 
everything that's on the fresco in the solar, right? But then on the Drupal side, you can do a search against that solar, and you're searching, you're basically doing a federated search. You're searching everything, right? You're searching yourself, you're searching this, and you, potentially you could be searching other things as well. Very nice system. Solar on its own is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, but, you know, integrated with Alfresco, it's a, it's a really nice combination. Uh, and it's actually just recently that, they, they, that Alfresco chose to use solar. Uh, version 4.0 is the latest version of solar. Um, and uh, just to actually sp speak a little bit about uh, kind of how Alfresco works in terms of their, their kind of software licensing and things like that on how they make money, uh, it's a little bit different than how Drupal works. So the way Drupal works is, um, is essentially there's one code base for Drupal, right? That's it, you know? There's no free version, there's no, and then a paid version, right? It's not like Red Hat, right? It's not like, you know, CentOS and Red Hat, right? It's just Drupal. There's just one version, you know, six, seven, eight, whatever, right? Now, and Acquia makes money um, through the cloud services, right? They make money through um, uh, professional services and things like that. But they don't really make money um, from selling a commercial version of Drupal, right? That doesn't exist. So, but the way that a fresco works is that way. It's more like the CentOS Red Hat model. So whereby there's the community version and then there's the enterprise version is how it works. Um, so the community version is, you know, the open source free version. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's kind of the same model as CentOS Red Hat in the sense that it's considered to be kind of the bleeding edge um, part of it. Uh, you don't get a lot of bug fixes going on. You don't get things like that. Uh, but it's free, right? It's, but it's, I mean, it, compared with enterprise, it, it pretty much does everything that enterprise does. Um, now, the enterprise version, obviously, you get, you get, you know, the support from Alfresco, you get um, bug fixes, you get the latest um, kind of vetted technology. Uh, the thing about the community version is, is that it is community. It's like, you know, the community can contribute to it. Um, and, you know, that's, that's great and all, but it, it doesn't get, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you're going to get quality code. And you don't, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be vetted and reviewed very well. Okay, so that's actually my last slide there. And uh, so the final one here. And uh, just uh, an added note there that uh, my HR person wanted to <laughs> mention that we are hiring. And if you do want to uh, check out our site, uh, abnovation.com slash jobs, we are looking to hire people in Vancouver, Atlanta, and uh, London, and uh, even remotely, we're looking for top quality Alfresco people and top quality Drupal people. Uh, just check out our website. Uh, and there it is right there. Um, so that's it. Um, so I guess we can move on to questions. Do we have any questions? Yeah, right here. Yes, yes, it would. So if you're running the both of them on, two, on the same server, you'd have two copies of it. It replicates them, yep, that's right. correct. It absolutely <coughs> does. Yeah. Now, in the case of a PDF, um, I mean, typically how, how we would do it, if, you, if you're integrating something into an article or a blog, uh, it's better to upload, you can upload like an HTML file into Alfresco, and that can be your content in Alfresco, and that really simplifies, obviously, the sync, because, you know, HTML is pretty easy to, easy to sync. PDF, I mean, we do do conversion there, but, you know, you know how good that can be, right? You know, converting PDFs to to HTML. So for the most part, that would get that would get replicated. That PDF file would get replicated completely on the Drupal side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, no. In fact, we've well, what we've usually done is uh, f for that scenario is that um, very often we've done uh, sites where we've hosted Drupal on the cloud on the Acura cloud. Uh, and then, because the Aqua Cloud is is Amazon, right? It's, it's built on Amazon, in particular the the West Virginia, uh, no Virginia um, data center, is, is where Amazon's Virginia data center is where they have it. So we, typically, what we do is is we, we we do the cloud, and then we get something at Amazon at that same data center, right? And then we integrate them that way. I mean, that that's great because we're in the same data center. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way, though. I mean, it could be somewhere other uh, somewhere else in the world. It doesn't matter uh, at all. Yep. How have you uh, decided between uh, suggesting whether someone uses the enterprise version of Alfresco or the open source version? Uh, we usually recommend, we usually do recommend the enterprise version, uh, mainly because of support. I mean, one of the things that, um, I mean, Alfresco, we uh, are, um, 
I mean, we're, we're software for hire. Our, our company is a software for hire company, right? We build software. We don't really support software, right? I mean, that's one of the nice things about, about working with Acura is that uh, they do a lot of that support for us, right? They have that thing, that, that going on. That's the same thing with Alfresco, right? That's what you get when you, when you do the enterprise, right? It's nice for us because, you know, after that, you know, we're somewhat hands-off. Obviously, we would, you know, if there's some crisis, obviously, we'd deal with it. But, but we are more or less hands-off at that point, just the way we are with Acura when we, when we finish a project uh, that we host there. Yep, right here. Correct. So, is there other plans to just make everything through Drupal itself? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we are tr we are working on actually integrating those workflows into Drupal, um, so that you could actually just complete. I mean, that's and that's a to, that's a huge request that we get from 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 cl from clients as well. Is that you know we get we get a lot of clients uh, that are interested in this in, in this type of integration, but we get a lot of clients that say I don't even want to see Alfresco, right? We get a lot of that as well. So, so uh, yes, that is definitely something that, that uh, we want to do, and uh, we are actually actively working on right now. Yep, yeah, right here. Why did you choose uh, to replicate file? Yeah, the main reason to replicate is, is so, I mean, we didn't really, like, on the Drupal side, for example, we didn't want to do anything funky, like, say, with the data model or anything like that. We just wanted, we just wanted Drupal to have assets or nodes that it, that it understands, right? That was really the reason why we decided to replicate. Um, so that that way, uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to do any, everything just works, right? All, it's, just a, it's just a small portion, you know, of the application, a small module that can take the data and just insert it into a node type, well understood node type, and then everything in Drupal that's associated or supposed to work with that node type just works the way it is, out of the box, no brainer. So that's really the main reason why we decided to do that. And, and, and the way the data is stored in Alfresco is not in a format that Drupal, that Drupal could understand. Um, so that's obviously another reason why we do it, did it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it depends. It all depends. I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I might have made it seem from my, this presentation that, you know, CMS sucks, but I, I didn't, I, that's not the case. That's, that's definitely not the case. Um, I mean, there's, there's many, many clients that we work with where it is the solution. CMS is what they want. That I mean, that is the solution that they want. Um, so, I mean, it all depends on what it exactly it is that you, you want to do with this integration. Uh, maybe CMS can do it for you. Um, but other than that, I don't know, maybe you do need to wait to the end of the year until we can open source this. Um, but, uh, um, at the, and again, the CMS, as I was saying, is, is not quite there yet either. Uh, the CMS module on the Drupal side isn't quite there yet either. But uh, it's, it's, it's far enough along, and it's, and it's a simple enough kind of module that you can, you can usually bend it and adapt it to the, way that you, the ways that you want. Yeah. Um, can, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so what he, did you get the first part of the question? No. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so he was asking um, if, he wants, if he wants to do an integration like this, does he have to wait till the end of the year until, until we open source it, uh, which is a good question. Um, so um, as I mentioned that, you know, very often CMIS uh, is the solution and can, is a great solution for you. Um, as, as I say, many of our, our clients, um, that is, is the solution for them. Um, but apart from that, um, I mean, I suppose that is the case. I mean, maybe that's, I mean, it's a great question, actually. And it makes me think that maybe, <laughs> maybe we should be piecemealing this thing out and maybe not wait for the whole ball of wax before we actually release it uh, out, to, out to the public. So it's a very good point, actually. Um, and maybe that is something that we need to reconsider. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah. I mean, for asset or document <coughs> management, one essential key feature is batch import. I didn't find any. Yeah. I have, for example, two terabytes of uh, documents, folder structure. Yeah. And I want to import everything with one click. Yeah. Yeah, Alfesco. Um, 
Yeah, there's a, there's a number of ways you can do it. Yeah, FTP is one, SIFS is one, but in reality, LDAP. LDAP. Well, LDAP's not a way to do it. Um, and I don't want to, to import or move the structure. I have a NAS and I want the files where they are. I just wanted to import. Yeah. The well, there is there is a. Want to, to move it. Yeah. Well, there is actually a module uh, or plugin, I guess you could say. Um, for Alfresco, um, which has the uh, the very sexy name of Batch Loader, <laughs> and 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 what it allows you to do is is actually um, just basically just suck suck files in straight from the file system into it, um, and that's actually kind of the more the recommended way of doing massive amounts of data. Like if you want to like terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data, that's the way to do it. Yeah, so yeah, hopefully Google will help you out on that batch loader because that's a very catchy name. <laughs> yep. Uh, you are creating uh, nodes or something like that in Drupal? Nodes? Uh, nodes from, the, from a document in Alfresco, you're going to synchronize to nodes or something like that in Drupal? Are you saying notes or nodes? Nodes. Nodes, yes, absolutely. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's a great idea. Uh, yep. Um, well, I mean, we've just kind of recently kind of gone on onto the uh, the Drupal seven uh, kind of part of it. Um, when we when we first started Alfresco, Drupal seven was still, you know, not ready for prime time. And um, so we, we, we didn't really pay a lot of attention to that. Um, but uh, actually, that's a great idea, especially with you know, how, how important that's going to be in 7 and 8. So it's a great idea. I mean, I think it's just some. Absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Other questions? That's interesting. Um, yeah, it just, it's Drupal 8, it's not going to have versioning built in, right? Drupal 8, I don't think so. So that would be an interesting thing of how that would work with Drupal, with uh, um, um, how that might work uh, with Alfresco is, is how the versioning works and that inline editing. Um, but I don't see why, why, why it shouldn't work. I mean, it's, it's uh, I, I, I know that they're looking at look, the Aloha editor for that, um, for, for supporting that. and. Um, and you know, I've experimented a little bit with that, and uh, the, sorry, yes, I'm very familiar with that. Actually, um, um, we're actually doing a fair amount of work with that. Uh, we're probably going to be one of the first organizations to actually try to build something with that, uh, something real. Uh, right now, it's pretty buggy, but um, uh, we've been working with Angie. Uh, you probably know Angie. Uh, on that, uh, that, but we haven't really considered like how that how that affects Canopy at this point. But um, obviously, um, we need to think about that, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you had a question back here. Um, yeah, I have the question about the kind of access control um, through the Drupal site. I, I would like to use uh, Alfresco because the Drupal site uh, for the file system is not really great. So. Um, does the CMS module uh, allow uh, access control on the different folders? Or, or what, what yeah, so that is something that um, it doesn't support uh, at the moment, uh, like if you get it from the website. But we actually have modified it for a client to do that, to support that. Um, um, we want to do a little bit more work on that. We'll contribute it back. Um, but uh, at the moment, out of the box, no, it's, it's, like, it's hard coded. It's like admin, admin. Right, you know, it's like it's one user at the moment. No matter which user you log in as on the Drupal site, it's just going to do admin, admin, or whatever user you want. Yeah, but so, so you could like on the node have an access control on, on the folder nodes. So, uh, yes, absolutely. Like you, like like that that is is replicated or is meaningful on the Fresco side as well. Yes, absolutely. And then the other question: Can you upload the document from the CMS Drupal to the Fresco? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you definitely can. Does the CMS standard uh, 
Yeah, I, I, in fact, I, I don't even think the standard actually even specifies it. But um, it, it's, it just takes the authentic, it's just authentication. So if you authenticate as that user, well, Fresco, if you, if you authenticate CMIS as, say, the gym user, you only get access to the gym stuff, right? Uh, not a whole lot of experience actually doing that. Um, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult to do. Um, I believe SharePoint actually even supports CMS. Um, I could be wrong, but it might actually even support CMS. It does. It does. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you might be able to do something there. Um, um, probably not the best way to do it actually through CMS. But um, um, yeah, I'm not that familiar with SharePoint in terms of like what kind of export kind of you can what kind of exports you can do, but I imagine that it shouldn't be that uh, very doable. I mean, uh, one, one of the worst <laughs> migrations I uh, I ever did with with uh, Alfresco was uh, somebody actually wanted to pretty large organization actually wanted to uh, uh, re replicate their Exchange server in Alfresco, like all of their direct like they, they had these massive directory structures in Exchange. Um, that they want to move into Alfresco and then have people actually connect to it with their Outlook, right? <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. And this was like terabytes and terabytes of data. Um, so that was certainly the most painful <laughs> that I'd ever experienced. And believe me, I'm sure SharePoint would be much simpler than, than that, that migration. Yep, right here. What do you think about uh, Nuxeo as an alternative for Alfresco? An alternative for Alfresco? Or is it? Is what an alternative, sorry? Nuxeo. Mm, I'm not familiar with that, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm not familiar with that, actually. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, right here. What kind of license uh, do you have for the community? It, just open so it's, uh, it's probably just going to be similar to like a GNU kind of license. It's going to be open source. It's uh, similar to Drupal. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even Apache, actually, we might go with. Any other questions? Okay, I guess that's it. Thank you.